everyone, uh, my name's Kelvin and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial for Procreate. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you my process to make this illustration. And it's a little bit of a complex uh, layout here, but I think it's worth uh, following along even if you're a beginner, because hopefully this will shed some light on uh, how I break down uh, slightly more complicated illustrations with a few layers going on. Now, of course, to get the watercolor effect, I'm using a watercolor paper texture and the brushes from the regular watercolor brush kit. And I'll put links to all of those materials in the description down below. So the sketch is up here uh, as the very top layer and I've set it to multiply. Uh, and the reason I did that is I don't want it to cover up my artwork. So I'm gonna set it to multiply and then lower the transparency just so I can barely see it there. Then I'm gonna start painting on a blank layer underneath the paper texture just like you normally would. And I'm gonna start with a brush from the regular watercolor brush kit uh, that I haven't used before in any of my tutorials, but it's a really handy brush. And it's called the Hard Edge Round. Uh, and it's very much like the Abstract Round, except it's a little easier to control and it has a slightly hard watercolor edge. And it's gonna be perfect for the bike frame. And for the color, you could choose any color you want, of course, but I'm gonna start with a kind of desaturated blue color. And I'm gonna quickly fill out the bike frame and I'm gonna use one trick that you're probably already aware of, but I'll just demonstrate it here. So I'm gonna set the brush size about as wide as I want the frame to be. And then I'll do one frame bar like that. And I'm holding the position at the end and it just sort of snaps it into a line. And this is gonna help me make the frame a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna start by doing this one here like that. Then hold it at the end until it snaps into a line. And I'm just gonna continue on and do all the uh, different portions of the bike frame that way. And after I've got the frame done, uh, I'm gonna do the little hub in the front, as well as the uh, middle gear here, and then the gear on the back wheel. And then as a finishing uh, touch on the frame, I'm gonna do the wheel hubs, and I'm gonna use the same snapping technique. So I'm gonna try to make that wheel fill the screen as much as possible. Uh, and at the right size there, I'm just gonna do this very, very carefully. And then I'm gonna hold the position at the end and it will kind of snap into an arc. Uh, and then I can position that just a little bit better. There we go. And I'll do the same thing for the back wheel. And now that the main portions of the frame are finished, I'm just gonna go in there with the eraser and fix any of these kind of mistakes that I made. Uh, where the lines kind of went too far. And after I've cleaned up the frame a little bit, I'm gonna go in there with the water blender brush. And at a pretty small size, just big enough to fit in the frame, I'm just gonna blend up all these kind of overlapping lines. And this might be easier if you turn off the sketch. And now the frame is basically done, so I'm gonna turn the sketch back on, and I'm gonna do the wheels now and some of the other details. So I'll make a new layer above the frame. And this time I'm gonna use a darker color, almost black, I guess. And I'm gonna go back and grab that uh, hard edge round brush for this one. Now for the wheel, uh, I'm also gonna use the snapping trick to help me make this kind of round. So I'm first gonna go over it just as best as I can, but it won't be perfect. And then once I get around to the beginning, I can just hold that position. Uh, and then you can see it's snapping it into a circle. And I'll just try my best to position that. It's not a perfect circle, but uh, it's probably better than what I could freehand. There we go. And it's a, a little bit in the wrong position, so I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, circle the wheel like that. I'm gonna grab the move tool and then just kind of change the position and try to position it a little bit better. There we go. And I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the front wheel. The wheels look pretty good. So now I'm gonna use the same brush, same color. I'm just gonna shrink the size and I'm gonna do some of the other uh, small details here like the pedals uh, and the basket on the back. And where the uh, watercolor kind of overlapped on the wheels, I will uh, smooth that out with the water blender real quick. Now in a few areas, the wheel is overlapping the frame where it should be the other way around. So I'm just gonna make sure I've got the layer with the wheels selected and then I'm gonna fix that with the eraser brush. So just in areas like this, I'll just kind of erase the wheel just so it has a space for the frame. And I'll do the same thing on the front wheel. 
And that's looking pretty good, so I'm gonna merge the wheel and the frame together onto one layer, just like that. And I think I wanna change the color of the frame. Uh, I want it to be a little bit more blue, so while that layer is selected, I'm gonna go to the adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness for the layer. Then I'm gonna shift the hue and try to find a slightly uh, better color, or at least a color that I like a little bit more. And now I think I wanna add the chain real quick, so I'm gonna do that on another layer. And using a pretty dark color, I guess it doesn't really matter, I'm gonna grab the fine liner pen brush. And at a pretty small size, I'll just rough that out, but I'm gonna use the same snapping trick. And I think that turned out pretty good, so I'll go ahead and merge that with the frame and the wheels uh, as well. And now I can move on and paint her real quick. So I'm gonna make a new layer above everything, and I'm gonna choose a, a good skin tone color. And it's okay if it's a little bit wrong because we can shift the hue later on. And for the brush, I'm gonna grab the abstract round and very, very roughly, I'm just gonna fill out her kind of silhouette. And after that, I need to kind of clean up the edge. So I'm gonna turn off the frame uh, and then just use the eraser brush and just sort of clean it up all the way to the very edge of the sketch there. And now I wanna move on to sort of defining uh, different parts of her outfit. Uh, right now it's all one color, but I'm gonna use the selection tool to isolate each part and then change the color. So I'm gonna grab the selection tool, set it to freehand, and I'm first just gonna quickly uh, kind of outline the silhouette of her dress. And now once the dress is selected, I can go to the uh, hue, saturation, and brightness, uh, and then sort of shift the color, saturation, and hue and try to give this a, a color. There we go, I think that looks pretty good. And I'm gonna do the same thing to the hair, but I think I'll shift it to a darker color. So this is starting to come together. So I think at this point, um, I'm gonna lighten the sketch a lot more just so I can barely, barely, barely see it there. Uh, and I'm gonna add some shadows to kind of differentiate this a little bit better. So I'm gonna do that with the selection tool. And one of the first problems here is the sleeve. Uh, when I turn off the sketch, it's totally invisible. So uh, what I'm gonna do is add a shadow along the bottom and a very light one across the top. So I'll grab the selection tool, make sure it's on freehand, and I'm gonna make sure the uh, layer with uh, the woman is selected. And then using that tool, I'm just gonna create a selection that just sort of chases along the uh, edge of the sleeve and the arm. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and just slightly, slightly darken the dress in that area. And I'll do the same thing to the uh, top side there, but maybe to a lesser degree. And basically using the same process, I'm gonna go through uh, the whole illustration here and add shadows to kind of define her neck, uh, define her ear, uh, the back of the hair, uh, and then I'm probably gonna add like a highlight uh, on the tops of her arms. And there we go, that looks pretty good. And I think at this point I can move on and do the shoes real quick. And that's really easy, basically the same process I've been doing. I'm just gonna grab the selection tool and just select the shoe, just like that. And I'll add a selection and do the other one too. Uh, and then I'm gonna adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness and just make those like kind of dark colored. It's not exactly important exactly which color they are, but I think something like that will look good. Now with uh, her at this point, like basically almost done, I'm gonna turn the bike frame back on. Uh, and now you can see, um, this is sort of the point of the tutorial. I wanna explain uh, how I handle layers that are sort of like split between two different layers. So there's definitely a foot in the front and there's definitely a foot in the back. And this is a little bit of a struggle. So the first thing I wanna do is get rid of the transparency. So uh, this, the, uh, the frame here is showing up through her and that's because uh, this watercolor texture has some transparency to it. So I'm gonna use a similar trick or the same trick I use uh, in a few of my other videos where I do the uh, copy and then make a white version of it. And it's really simple. So here's the layer with the woman. I'm gonna duplicate it, turn off the top one and then select the bottom one. Then I'm gonna go to hue, saturation and brightness and then raise the brightness, basically just max it out. Now you can see in the layers panel, basically I've got uh, the copy of the woman in color right, and then one that's in white. 
So I'm gonna make a few copies of the white one. And you'll notice as I make copies, it's starting to cover up the frame a little bit better. Now when I turn on the colored one, uh, it's basically, um, obviously you can see the sketch there, but basically the white ones are occluding the frame. Um, and this is gonna get rid of the transparency while keeping the watercolor texture. So now I've got all these layers, basically all these white versions uh, and then the colored version. I'll just merge those together by pinching them. And now what I need to do is separate basically this leg. I need to separate it onto a different layer, uh, a layer behind the bike frame. So what I'm gonna do is grab the selection tool and I'm gonna select that leg just like that and I'm gonna do copy and paste. Now in the layers panel, it's made a copy of that leg, but my selection is still active. And it's important, you need to leave that selection active, go back to the original one, right? And then clear it. Now what we've done is basically, we've cut out that leg from the original one and then pasted it on a different layer. So I know that's a little bit confusing, but it might be worth watching that again um, because this is a really handy trick. Now with that leg sort of separated onto another layer, um, I can actually move it and put it behind the bike frame. And now we have a similar problem where now in this case, it's the bike frame that's showing the leg through it. So we need to do the same trick we did uh, with the actual body of the woman here uh, and give it a white background. So I'm gonna do the same trick again. So I'll make a copy of the bike frame, uh, turn off the copy, select the original one, the bottom one, hue, saturation, and brightness, raise the brightness, creating basically a white version of the bike make maybe two copies of it, uh, turn on the colored one. Now you can see the transparency is gone because these two white copies of the bike are just blocking it. And then I'll merge all three together. So this is the only tricky part in the video, I guess. And it's uh, just separating the woman uh, into two different layers so the bike can be kind of like in between. And it might be worth, you know, like I said, watching this part again. Uh, if you wanna avoid all this complicated layer uh, kind of madness that I've got going on here. You can always just do it all on one layer uh, and just paint it very carefully. But by cutting the layers, giving them that white background, we're just trying to save time to paint this illustration. So this is looking really good and it's almost done. Now I'm gonna do the plant real quick and I won't follow the sketch. Uh, and I'm just gonna kind of fast forward through this because it's a little bit self-explanatory, but I'm gonna do it all with the fine liner pen and the abstract round brush. So there we go, that's it for the plant. And it is on a layer above everything, so I'm gonna move it underneath the bike frame. Now you can see where the basket on the bike frame overlaps. There's a little bit of a contrast issue, and uh, I like actually layering different shades. It makes it look a lot like real watercolor. So what I'm gonna do is make sure the potted plant is selected. Then I'm gonna use the selection tool and just sort of shadow uh, the rough shape of the frame like this. Then I'm gonna go to hue, saturation, and brightness. Uh, and then I'm just raising the brightness of the pot kind of just around that frame just to increase the contrast. And I really like the way that looks. Now to add a kind of interesting shadow to the dress, which turned out a little bit boring, um, I wanna imagine these plants are kind of casting a shadow. So I'm gonna open the layers panel and then find the layer with the dress on it. And then using the selection tool, I'm just gonna kind of freehand kind of the rough shape of some leaves like that. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness and just darken it. Just maybe a couple of percent. Just so you can barely see just a little bit of detail there on the dress. And at this point, I think I can finish it up by adding the details on the face. So I'll zoom in there and then make a new layer above everything. And I'm gonna select almost pure black and then I'm gonna grab the fine liner pen. And at a really small size, I'm just gonna rough out these face details. And after the black line details are done, I'm gonna switch over to white uh, and then finish up the eye. And if the features look a little bit too intense, you can always lighten them up. So I'm gonna do that with the selection tool set to freehand. And I just wanna modify the uh, mouth line and the eyebrow, so I'll select just those. Then I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And because these are on a separate layer, um, I can kind of adjust them independently and I'll lighten them up just a little bit. 
There we go, I think that looks good. So we're almost done here and I've switched off the sketch. And I think at this point, uh, if you want to, you can add a very light outline in a few areas. So I'm gonna do that on a separate layer above everything. And I'm gonna select a pretty dark color again uh, in the fine liner pen, but this time at a really, really, really small size. Uh, and on that separate layer, I'm just gonna kind of outline a few areas where I think it kind of needs that. And after that, you can just set that layer to multiply and then lower the opacity basically to zero and then just raise it up uh, a little bit at a time until you can just barely, barely see it. We're just trying to kind of enhance a few of the edges. There we go, and this one is all done. And uh, as you can see, it prints out really nicely. And um, I really love this style of artwork. I was kind of looking on Pinterest and uh, seeing a lot of similar stuff. And if you're looking for new ideas, I highly recommend uh, just looking up simple or cute illustrations on Pinterest and you'll find all kinds of ideas to paint. And that pretty much wraps it up. But uh, as always, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.